Hi, Michelle. Welcome and thank you for giving your time and expertise to our members today. Hello. Michelle has a lifelong passion for food, science, and eco-nutrition. Her educational background is in environmental science, design, marketing, and culinary nutrition. She's a registered holistic nutritionist and a raw food chef that supports local and organic farmers, while also educating individuals on the power of clean, natural foods for prevention of illness and optimal wellness. She's also the owner of her own company, Rooted in Nutrition. Without further ado, I now pass the presentation over to you, Michelle. I'm just going to make you the host. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Shama, and thank you everyone for joining this evening. Tonight we're going to talk about how to increase your brain power and we're going to go through the areas how does your brain actually rebuild its cells, what the brain needs to do this, specific foods that can help you increase your brain power, supplements, tips and exercises. So starting off with how do you actually build your brain power? One of the main areas is regeneration of brain cells and the regeneration of brain cells starts in the hippocampus, which is a small area on the top of your spinal cord in your brain. And it's responsible for the BDNF, which is a growth hormone that improves brain structure. It actually has the ability of building up to 700 new cells daily and it's a center for mood, memory and learning. The other area is a communication between nerve cells and synapses in our brain. This is very important because when they um, are in trouble, they actually form a protection of plaque over them. And this can be seen in forms of Alzheimer and dementia. And the brain actually also has a brain detoxing system, which is called the glymphatic system. So very similar to our lymphatic system in our body, which detoxes our blood, the glymphatic system detoxes our brain cells daily. And the most important area of building brain power is the gut-brain connection. And the gut and the brain are actually connected via the vagus nerve, which you could see in the diagram on the side. And they are directly connected. And because of this connection, they're actually calling the gut the first brain. So they're, the main reason is because they're finding that the gut now produces most of our serotonin and our dopamine and other chemical reactions that we once thought was uh, done in the brain, which is now done in the gut. And lastly, blood flow is very important for our whole entire system, our bodily systems, but may also for our brain. Uh, this can be done via exercise, increasing water intake, and sleep patterns. So what does he actually, what does the brain actually need to increase its power? One of the main things is sleep. An optimal amount of time would be six to eight hours with REM. Sleeping is an actual brain tonic, so it's remote we sleep, our brain and our body regenerates and detoxes cells. And this also aids in oxygen and blood flow throughout our body. Exercise also regulates our blood flow and oxygenation, oxygen, oxygenate our cells. It also enables a BDNF growth hormone to be released quite rapidly. So the more we exercise, it's directly related to the re release of BDNF growth hormone. And exercise also improves our cognitive function. It maintains our memory and also our brain cell size. The other areas that our brain needs is natural light from the sun. Uh, not indoor lighting, but actual sunlight. This stimulates brain and most act and activates most centers in our brain. They use light therapy for head trauma and brain injuries for several years. And they also have used sound for therapy in our brain. And the music is a pattern of information that's contained in energy frequencies. So these uh, frequencies trigger different reactions in our brain and also activates different centers in our brain. And there's a brain HQ test that you, that you can actually do that shows the pathways that are being stimulated with music, which improves cognitive function areas of our brain. And lastly, what we're going to focus on today would be food. One of the major areas that we can improve our brain function would be with what we actually put in our mouth. It plays, food plays a major role in our brain function with our neurotransmitter hormone regulation. It also is responsible for our memory hormone, which is called pregnanolone. And this is highly affected by stress. And the stress hormone is called cortisol, which many of you I'm sure have heard of. 
food also plays a very large role in the inflammation of our body, including our brain, and as well as cellular regeneration. Food affects our microbiome. So the microbiome is with the gut brain connection. So as soon as we change our microbiome in our gut, it directly affects the connection between the, gra- the brain and the gut and how the brain reacts to the microbiome is very, very important. And lastly, water intake is very important. And that plays a major role in circulation of our whole glymphatic system and also with our cell regeneration. So what foods are important for our brain? One of the most important foods that you can uh, change in your diet would be smart fats. So what are smart fats? Smart fats are typically omegas, or they're also called essential fatty acids or EFAs. And the most important of the omega fats would be omega-3. Another important omega fat would be omega-6. There are also other omegas called seven and nine, but the two most important ones for your brain cells would be the three and the six. And in a very um, strict ratio of two to one, as soon as we start eating out of balance and our omega-6 ratio becomes much greater than our omega-3 ratio, that can cause a pro-inflammatory effect on our brain and inflammation throughout our whole entire body. Omegas also are really important in helping us absorb vitamin D from the sun and converting it to vitamin D3, which is what is used by the cells, and also for transporting oxygen to all the cells in our body. And when oxygen is transported to our cells, this typically lowers inflammation in the body. Omegas are also very, very important for your cardiac health. Um, most people who have cardiac issues have shown to have very low amounts of omega-3 in their body. So what smart fats are out there that you can eat on a daily basis? Um, They're really easy and quite uh, cost-effective to get. The main one, hemp seeds, which are actually native to Canadian soil, are the most highest in omega-3 content. Uh, Hemp seed cells contain at least 73% omega-3 and 85% Um, total all omegas, including omega-6, 7, and 9. So it is the richest, most balanced omega uh, brain food that we have. The next one would be flax seeds. They're also a food uh, native to Canada. They also have wonderful anti-cancer lignans in them, so very important for women especially to have a daily intake of flax seeds. Flax seeds do need to be ground in order to get their benefits. So eating them whole, it's highly unlikely that you're able to chew them down and digest them properly. So it's always very important to grind your flax seeds before you would ingest them. Another important seed to have for our brain power would be pumpkin seeds. They're very high in omega-3 as well. On the, They're third on the list, but they're also very high in protein and they have a wonderful anti-parasitic effect. So if you are suffering from parasites or you're going to be traveling, they're a wonderful um, seed to bring with you or to eat a few weeks in advance just to get that extra bonus of the parasitic benefits. Some, uh, fish oil would be another smart fat that contains high, level, high levels of omega-3 as well as DHEA. Um, the only ones that are typically high in omega-3 would be a small cold water fish like trout, mackerel, sardines. So ocean water fish is not typically high in omega-3. And also the other part of ocean water fish is that they have very high toxin amounts and the fish are typically bigger. So that toxin levels are quite high. Lastly, another um, animal-based product would be grass-fed meat or organic eggs. So omega-3s are not typically found in um, non-grass-fed meat or non-organic meat. Uh, Some people call it organic nor is it found in non-organic eggs unless it is injected or um, it is uh, put in the feed of the chickens. But you can find organic eggs, meaning the chickens are organic and organic grass-fed meat have low amounts, but substantial enough if you ate organic meat compared to non-organic meats. Another uh, food that is very important for our brain power would be amino acids. Amino acids are actually the building blocks of a protein and they are very important for building neurotransmitters in the brain and 
plant-based, pardon me, plant-based sources would be the best source of protein because all proteins stem from a plant source. Animals uh, end up with protein in concentrated amounts in their flesh, but that is because they can't get it from eating plant sources. So plant sources, the highest ones with a uh, highest amount of proteins, and that would be a complete protein, would be beans, lentils, legumes, seeds, tofu, as well as hemp seeds have the highest amount of seeds, uh, protein in, in the seed category. Another very good protein would be venison or wild meats. And again, because they're a wild meat, they would have high amounts of omega-3 as well as a very good complex protein. Wild fish is another one and small cold water fish, as we talked about, um, also containing very high levels of omega-3. The next category of gut and brain food would be prebiotics and probiotics. So prebiotics are food for our good bacteria in our gut. And as we talked about before, the health of our gut is very important to the health of our brain, um, being that the gut and brain are directly connected to each other. So the probiotics that are actually in your gut, which is called the microbiome of your gut, would be the good bacteria. And the good bacteria are important because they keep the bad bacteria at bay. And probiotic foods are typically fermented foods like yogurt, kefir, sauerkraut, tempeh, kimchi, miso, kombucha, which is quite popular as a drink, and, and listed here as pickles, but any pickled food. And probiotic foods that are pickled or fermented typically means that it has to be raw, unpasteurized, and not heated. So any foods that state that they are pickled are not always necessarily fermented. And then prebiotic foods, which are foods that feed the good bacteria, would include bananas, artichokes, onions, garlic, berries, leeks, uh, raw honey means it's un unpasteurized, kiwi, oats, and yikama. So other brain foods that are very important would be antioxidants. So antioxidants means that they are cells that kill off the free radical cells. Free radical cells are cells that are uh, produced from just bodily functions in our body, and um, they need to be detoxed out of our body. And that is done with an antioxidant type cell. And these are very high in small dark berries. So berries like strawberries, blueberries, blackberries, elderberries um, are very popular. Other ones would be any kind of vegetable. Red wine uh, also has res resveratrol in it. So a few glasses of wine a week is also very good for increasing your antioxidant content. Another very popular tea would be green tea. And the matcha form of green tea would be the whole plant of the green tea where it is dehydrated and aged and green tea would be just the leaves that would be seeped in hot water and drank as tea. So matcha has a much higher content of antioxidants as well as other many beneficial properties. Another one would be cacao, so not necessarily chocolate because chocolate is the processed version of the cacao bean, but the actual raw cacao bean, which you can find in stores, it, it is quite bitter. Um, and you can't find it in many different states, uh, like the whole bean, ground. You can get it with a combination of coffee and cacao in a tea bag. So there's many different forms of cacao on the market now, as well as chocolate bars, of course. And if you do enjoy chocolate, then I would suggest getting a chocolate bar that is higher in cacao, which has to be 75% plus chocolate which isn't always a bad thing. And lastly would be coffee. So coffee is an actual antioxidant. Um, it becomes non-beneficial when we overdrink it. So one cup a day is beneficial. It's also fantastic for pre-workouts and to increase energy and your brain power. So it is a very good drink to have it's just, as long as it's not overly processed and fair trade coffee is typically much better than the larger coffee brand coffees that are out there.
And herbs that are good for your brain, one of the most important ones would be turmeric or curcumin is the active compound in turmeric. And turmeric is a root similar to ginger. It's from the same family. It, it's very important for lowering inflammation throughout our entire body, especially our brain. Coffee fruit, which we don't necessarily find here unless it's in supplement form, but any countries along the equator, the coffee fruit is like a small red bean. It's actually a little bit on the sweet side. And if you can find those even dehydrated, um, you can try those out because they're an interesting fruit to try. And they have very high concentration of antioxidants as well. And sage would be a herb that's uh, a herb that you would use for cooking in the fall and with meats. It's a woody, rustic kind of herb. It's not as popular um, in typical cooking, but it is very, very good brain uh, herb for your brain. So those were the foods that are beneficial to add to your diet and it's a good idea to add at least one or one to three of those every day and then the other side would be foods to eliminate in your diet that are not so good for your brain so they're the typical ones that people um, shouldn't eat which would be white sugars um, any any processed sugars natural sugars are fine as long as they're kept to a minimum and the other one would be white foods. So white foods would include anything processed like breads, sugars, pasta. It's not necessarily the product that is the bad part of the white food, but it actually is the processing of the product that it's a bad food, for example, gluten or wheat. And bad fats would be um, very detrimental for your brain power. Trans fats, which are from fried foods, saturated fats, which are animal type fats, processed oils and unstable oils that can include corn oil, safflower oil, palm oils, and many oils that are out on the market, the larger oils that are in plastic containers, they don't always contain one single source oil. It's quite often a combination of oils and oils are very volatile when exposed to plastics and high levels of light and heat. So a lot of those oils, they are shelf stable, but they've been sitting on the shelf for very long periods of time, which deteriorates the molecules within the oil and that's why they become a bad fat. And lastly, pops or carbonated drinks. Um, they're fine to have occasionally. Um, diet ones are especially bad, but if you are going to have pops or carbonated drinks, keep it to a minimum. Not only do they leach minerals for our bones, which takes a long time to build up in the first place, they also can spike your insulin and they're not good for increasing your brain power. Hmm. So that brings us to supplements. Uh, there are some supplements that I recommend for increasing your brain power. Uh, one of them would be omegas, of course, being that is one of the most important fats that you could have um, for your whole entire body, but mainly for your brain. So if you're not getting enough omegas in your diet, I would recommend getting a good omega supplement. And you can take two to five grams per day. Um, if you are under uh, chronic inflammation or high inflammation or chronic illness, I would recommend taking up to 10 grams a day. But you should always consult your doctor because if you have high blood pressure, that would be an area that uh, doctors would be concerned about because omegas can lower your blood pressure naturally. And one of the uh, easiest ways to get omega oil, if you don't want a supplement which would come as a fish capsule, would be hemp seed oil, which again is readily available in Canada, being that it does uh, come from Canada. Another supplement would be D3. So D3 is the converted uh, version of vitamin D in our body. Not only is it necessary for our calcium and our magnesium uptake in our body, but it's also very important for our brain power, as is the sunlight. And you could take up to 5,000 milligrams a day. So a typical supplement bottle would have 
uh, 1000 milligram gram droplets in it. So you would take up to five of those a day. And especially us being here in the north and the Canadian latitude uh, during the winter months, you could take vitamin D supplements anywhere from now September all the way through to May. Um, and some naturopath doctors would even recommend that you take it throughout the year and that you just double your supplement in um, intake throughout the winter months. B vitamins are very important. Um, they mainly come from vegetable sources. They are water soluble. So what that means is that they're not stored in your body like the fat soluble vitamins, which are A, D, E, and K. So B vitamins are flushed out through our body. Um, as we intake them, they're flushed out throughout the day as well in our urine. And many vegans do not get enough B12 in their diet because B12 is the only B vitamin that does come from an animal source. So it's very important for vegans to take a B complex and especially a B12. And really just as a safeguard, if you're not eating your regular 50% um, plate should be fruits or vegetables, then I would highly recommend taking a B vitamin supplement. And lastly, magnesium is also very important, not only for our brain health, but for most people, because most of our food and our topsoil, the where our food grows, is actually 75 deficient, seven, sorry, pardon me, 75% deficient in our foods. And magnesium deficiency in soils is more concentrated in the Great Lakes area and in the upper um, states of the US. So we're in a prime area for magnesium deficiency, especially if we tend to eat a lot of local Ontario uh, fruits and vegetables. And magnesium is so important, uh, very important for our cardiac health, as well as our brain health, but it's also used in over 300 functions in our body, and really important as a cofactor in mineral absorption as well. So how do we increase our our health while we're eating our monday to friday eating at work it's very difficult when we're all so busy and we're all running around or we're working long hours but there's three really easy things that you could do and one of the top ones is to be prepared so stock your kitchen with the right ingredients make a list go out and purchase them make sure they're fresh if you purchase seeds nuts flowers anything that's ground from a seed nut or grain they should always be kept in the freezer and uh, not in a cupboard um, the freezer will keep the mold from not growing on the foods as well as it, keeping it fresh for a much longer period of time and the other thing would be is to eat whole foods so whole fruits and vegetables um, not cutting them up too far in advance of eating them because then you lose a lot of the enzyme properties and the beneficial properties of the actual fruits and vegetables so whole food stocking your kitchen with the right ingredients and then that way you can be prepared for the week in advance that brings you to meal prep. So if you have all the right ingredients in your kitchen, um, it's, it's highly beneficial to prep your meals. Um, even if you need to make a list and to change it up weekly would be a good idea. So you're not eating the same items over and over again. And that way you're getting a much varied um, nutrient and vegetable pro, I mean, nutrient and vitamin profile in the fruits and vegetables that you're eating. So making breakfast in advance, even if you start with making three simple breakfasts a week would be like an oatmeal bake in the oven. You can prep it, put it in the freezer and then bake it Monday morning. And then that would take you for one to three breakfasts. Uh, puddings in a cup that can be made in a jar and kept in the fridge for the week as well as lunches so as long as you're hot as long as you have the fresh ingredients there it's quite easy to whip up um, very tasty salads that include that include fruits nuts vegetables and grains um, so on the grain subject lentils quinoa barley even oats buckwheat is very very uh, nutrition uh, nutrient dense so making boiling some of those up and cooking those and having those in containers in your fridge for the week makes salads and lunches very easy to make and then as far as eating out many people have to eat out for business lunches or in the office for meetings 
it is a very tricky thing because many times there are not enough fruit and vegetarian dishes uh, as options when you're eating out. But most importantly is to remember that lunch is one meal of the day. So if you do have to eat out, try to choose your vegetarian dishes first. Ones that are lower in saturated fats, would be, which would be animal fats. And also a, a major one is portion control, because I know sometimes some meetings can go long, or there's you know a lot of very yummy looking foods that aren't necessarily as good for you. And it is very difficult to not eat everything that you see in front of you. So portion control would be very important. And an actual meal, um, a healthy meal would be the size of two of your hands cupped together. So you can use that as a, as a gauge or one hand full of, a, a, for a snack would be a very good gauge also. So if you don't overeat those amounts, then they would be healthy amounts for portion controls. And then brain exercises. Um, there's a lot of brain exercises that can help regenerate your brain power. Uh, one of them, which is gratitude pra practice, being grateful, um, making lists, journaling, um, is very, very good for your brain power. Another one would be meditation or hypnosis. Uh, meditation has been scientifically proven to increase your brain power and oxygenate your brain, as well as deep breathing is very important in their intermittent fasting diet. But whatever works for you is best. And what this means is your body goes into a ketonic state, so it starts using fat for energy. It lowers inflammation in your body. Um, the only thing it's not recommended if you're diabetic or if, if you're pregnant. And sometimes um, you would go on an intermittent fasting diet for a shorter period of time, like a month and then you would go off and then you could go back on again so that is um, a very energetic way of eating and a very good way to lower inflammation in your brain as well as overall for your body it also allows for a much better detoxing period throughout the evening and the daytime for your body to get through the 12 hours that it actually needs to detox all the things that you do throughout the day. And the best food combo that you can eat, obviously it would be of high quality nutrient dense foods, and that would be 50% fruits and vegetables, 30% protein, and 20% carbs. And if you're a vegetarian, that would be about 80% fruits and vegetables, which would include the protein portion, and then 20% carbs, which also would include a lot of grains and root vegetables. And I always tell everybody that tiny habits make big changes. So even trying a diet for a short amount of time and then going off it and then trying it again, you're still making changes and moving toward a better way of eating and improving the health of your brain. And then the summary of the presentation that we talked about today on improving your brain power. One of them was your, what your brain actually needs. And those would be whole foods are best good amounts of water throughout the day, exercise, sleep, sound, and natural sunlight. And brain foods, the top brain foods would be essential fatty acids, which include omegas three and six, complex or complete proteins, which can include plant-based proteins, probiotics and prebiotics, antioxidants and herbs and then supplements if necessary for therapeutic reasons or if you're not finding that you're eating enough of these items in your diet alone would be omegas especially omega-3s d3 b complex vitamins and magnesium and then you can always try brain exercises throughout the week you can always mix them up and try a few different ones each day